This is FBG Jen and FBG Kristen. And I'm FBG Margo, host and producer. You're listening to the podcast that will help you keep a lid on the junk in the trunk and inspire you to live a happy and confident life. Each episode, we chat with motivational experts and celebs and share our own candid adventures in being healthy. If you're looking for a podcast that's equal parts hilarious and enlightening, well then welcome to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. Welcome back to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. This is FBG Margo and on the line today we have Jen. Hi. And we have Kristen. Hello. So we have two amazing guests today. It's Tina Hoppert of Carrots and Cake Blog. She's a big time star in the blogging world. And Carrie Gotell of KFit Body. And they've created a business called Design to Fit. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about the FBG world because I feel like everybody needs to know about us and what's going on because we have so much going on. So Jen, do you want to be the audience about the FBG world? You and Kristen. Sure, sure. So what's fun is that... Well, what's kind of, I think, unique is that we got into kind of this, like, whole blogging thing, online thing, back in 2008, which is so long ago. And since then, our company and business has just evolved in so many different ways, both in technology and just how to reach people, but also in our message. And it's been a really interesting journey. And I think, I'm not sure when Tina started her blog, but I feel like it, like, it's it's interesting how like she's grown into different areas and so have we. So I started Fit Bottom Girls in 2008 with with Aaron Whitehead, my really good friend, and you know we we're like, oh, let's do a blog. What we want to have, we kind of had like a bigger vision. We knew we wanted to have multiple sites. We knew we wanted to body positivity wasn't even a term at the time, but we knew we wanted women to know they're more than the number on the scale. And so we just started like writing and reviewing stuff, and we got on the radar of other websites, other outlets. Uh, media outlets, brands, and we just started doing stuff. And I mean, kind of figuring out as we go, I know in past podcast episodes, we've talked about how this wasn't, you know, a career path when any of us were in school, we just kind of created it. And, and it just happened. And we just learned as we go. So along the way, you know, we've started got fitbottomgirls.com, fitbottommamas.com in 2010, fitbottomeats.com in 2014. FitBottomZen.com last year, and we started this podcast last summer too. So we just kind of keep growing and growing and growing. In 2014, Aaron and I published a book, The Fit Bottom Girls Anti Diet. And then, you know, in addition to all of that, like, you know, we've grown as people. So, you know, I've had a baby, Aaron had three kids. In the beginning of 2015, Kristen went from you know, basically Kristen started to write. What year did you start writing for us, Kristen? I think it was, oh. I think it was officially 2010. But then I think like I didn't, I, I wasn't doing it regularly enough to have like my own byline until 2011. 11? Yeah, that sounds right. Because Kristen and I met at a, an event in Chicago, mm-hmm. in a blogger event in Chicago. And then we headed off. And then Kristen was like, hey, I like what you're doing. I want to write for you. And we're like, you're an awesome writer. Yes. And at that yeah. point, we didn't really have anyone else writing for us except for my best friend, Tish, in L.A. So <laughs> we are like, okay, let's see how this goes. Like, we don't, Aaron and I were so used to running things and doing things on our own that we're like, okay, well, if we're going to grow, we can't do everything. So let's, you know, let's bring on some other voices. And Kristen became one of those really strong early voices that was just so powerful and so awesome. And also, Kristen is just super organized and passionate and committed and a super great writer and editor. So we just kept giving her more stuff and she was like hungry for it. So she kept writing and writing and writing. And then at one point, Aaron and I were like, maybe we should have Kristen come into the business. And Kristen was interested in it. And so Kristen officially came on in January of 2015. Is that right? I think that's right. Early 2015. And then we had, gosh, the three of us were kind of this powerhouse. And at that point we had also brought on other writers um, to come in from across the country to cover stuff like Margo. What I don't know what year you came in. I think 2011, maybe. Yeah, like as our as our New York City correspondent. Yeah, and started writing and reviewing, and we had just all these great writers and expanded our sites and everything. And then this past year, like last fall, 
Erin decided to go off and pursue some other things. So she's got three kids. She's got a lot on her plate. She was just like, hey, I think I need to have, I need to, I need to go do something else. I might want to teach. I might go back to school. But I think my time with Fit Bottom Girls is, is coming to a close. And it was weird and strange and kind of bittersweet because, you know, we as, you know, I started it with Erin and then we brought Kristen on. So we kind of been this powerhouse of females for a while. But then again, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? Like the whole point of Fit Bottom Girls is to kind of live your best life. So it was also really exciting and honestly empowering to see, you know, Erin be like, hey, I'm going to go do this new thing. So it was really cool. So um, she left the company in January of this year. And since then, Kristen and I have kind of rebranded a lot of the business and took the opportunity actually to rename the business to Fit Bottomed World. Since we're no longer just girls, we have a whole bunch of other sites below us and we hope to continue to grow and add on to that. And really, it's just a changing kind of, I believe, of the times and of our focus where girls is not just fitness and workouts. Girls has grown to be a full, complete lifestyle brand, whether you're a mom or you're not, or whether, you know, you're working or, or not, or, like, whatever you want to do, whatever you're into, whatever you're into, like, we really want to help you live your fully and complete best, most authentic life that's, like, totally 100% your healthy jam. Because when you feel good, you know, you can accomplish many more things in the world. So... The fun world kind of just encapsulates all of that. And I think from us, you're probably going to see some more things from us in the next couple of years. We've got some, we got some, we got some plans up our sleeve, don't we, Kristen? We do. We've got a few things cooking. The bottom world. Mm-hmm. Watch out, world. Watch out. <laughs> so how is it you two working together? You know, you're, you're close friends and you're also business partners. So is there ever a challenge or it, does it make things even better? Oh, it's awful. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. 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 Yeah, so I I will say I, I think it's awesome, truly. I, I But I think it's important to note that I think Jen and I bring different skill sets. So I, and I think that that was the case, you know, Erin had her own skill set that she brought in too. And I think that it would be really challenging if we, if we both excelled at exactly the same things and or really felt strongly about some certain like business things that we were both trying to make happen in our own ways. As is, I think that we, for one thing, we're pretty good at knowing when we need to have the business hat on versus the, I just need my friend hat. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're pretty, communication is very important with that because sometimes I'm like, I need to talk to you about a thing and it, has nothing to do with work or at least nothing to do with our business. And I, I just need to be heard and understood. And Jen is great about just being there and and doing that and not being, you know, CEO of FBG, Jen. Just Jen. Just Jen. (laughs) Just Jen. You know, but then, I mean, when we set, when we set a meeting, like we come in, we've got our notes, we, we really get shit done and we accomplish a lot and we are very, we're very serious about it. And you know, I think we're also we don't, we don't chat and gossip, you know. We just we get to right. it. Yeah, and we're we're extremely mission focused. I think that's yeah. where Kristen and I we do have overlapping skill sets. We do have separate skill sets, like you're saying that, like. But the the goal is always like, how can we reach the most people yes. with our message? How can we change the most lives? What's going to be the most beneficial? What feels right? And that's kind of always the thing, we, thing that we go back to when we make any sort of decision, when we write any article, when we decide to do anything, it's always like tapping back into that. And I think that when you are friends and when you're also running a business together, I think this is where Chris and I have done this like really pretty well, is like you have to have in some ways some separate boundaries, but then you also have to have this ability to be, because you have to work hard. I mean, you have to work hard, you have to do your job, you have to bring, you know, authenticity to it and respect to it and all that sort of stuff, which we do, and dedication. But then there's also this whole bit that's just flexible, I feel like, that we can kind of go with the flow because we're both, you know, we have outside interests too. We have outside lives. Things things happen, you know, you have off days, you have on days. And I think kind of that support that goes back and forth 
and to kind of um, being each other's support person back and forth. It's like, okay, I can't get to this today. Can you get to this today? Yes, like that's what I, I feel like for me personally has enabled me to be able to not only run, you know, what I think is an amazing business, but also to have, you know, sanity in my life and free time, you know, and it's so funny because Chris and I always will always say like, oh, you know, I'm the, <laughs> well, we are the boss, you know, we can kind of decide to do whatever we want to do, but that's easier to do when you have someone that's next to you who is helping you to take things off your plate or that you can help out in return when they need it. Yep. I feel I like, agree. I agree. And I feel like that when we create every episode, you know, I, I join in with you guys, like we, we prep stuff, you know, we know what we're going to talk about. We, we, we are good with our guests. We have great questions and stuff like that. I just, I love working with you guys on this podcast because I feel like that energy from the both of you, like we're all using our great skills to the best, to the best of our abilities. And we're reaching so many people and it's just been so much fun for me to be a part of the fit bottom world. And I'm so I don't know, pleased as punch to be with you guys today and every day. Oh my God. We, your skill set is so amazing to me. I don't even know. <laughs> like the whole host editing, all the pad, pad, podcast stuff. Margaret was like a, you're like a podcast shiro. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to leave it on that note. I love this so much. <laughs> So let's just go right into today's interview. It's with Design to Fit, Tina Hopper, and Carrie Gotell. Welcome back to the Fit Bomb Girls podcast. Tina Hoppert is a writer, cookbook author, mom, and the blogger behind Carrots and Cake, a popular healthy living and lifestyle website focused on fitness, food, and fun. She is a certified precision nutrition coach as well as a CrossFit level one trainer. Carrie Gotell is the owner and head coach at KFit Body, an all women's boot camp in Weymouth, Massachusetts. She is a precision nutrition certified level one coach. She is a licensed physical therapist assistant. She is a CrossFit Level 1 trainer and earned an SCW certification in sports nutrition. They are here today to talk about the joint venture designed to fit, plus offer their best healthy eating and meal prep tips. Welcome to the show, Tina and Curry. Thanks, guys, for having us. Thank you. Sure, sure. It's, everybody? So this is Margo, and on the line we have Kristen. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Hi. So we're, I'm going to ask you the first question. So, ladies, how did Design to Fit come to be, and how did you two end up working together? So we actually met at a CrossFit gym and became fast friends. I was doing some nutrition and programs for the girls at my gym, and Tina and I would have some lengthy runs together and also many nights with glasses of wine. <laughs> And that's kind of how our idea to get together and, you know, join as more on a business level came. And I was looking to kind of reach out to a market outside of the gym. And that was it. We just put our heads together and Design to Fit was born. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what Design to Fit is for our readers who are not familiar with it? Or listeners. Sorry. This is a podcast, not a blog post. <laughs> it's both, actually. <laughs> It is. That's true. So, yeah, Design to Fit, we make custom meal plans. We really do create meal plans that are custom to your lifestyle, your habits, your workout schedule, anything, your dietary restrictions or food sensitivities or even preferences. So we make our meal plans fit your life, really. Cool. And you guys use macros, correct? Yeah, it's a macro-based plan, but it really just comes down to healthy and balanced eating. Um, it, it, it is the basis, the macro system and everything, but we really do just want people to have well-balanced meals that they're excited to eat, and we're really all about good food. Yeah, you're just going to get an actual breakdown, but one of the things we definitely are trying to get people to focus on is not be so stressed about the numbers. We definitely know macros is a big trending word right so now. Fuzzy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think it's it's kind of funny because, you know, it breaks down to calories and, and people are like, oh, what's this new macro thing? I need to try it. And if you've ever done a diet that involves, you know, a high fat or a low carb or, a, you know, calorie restricted or high protein, like you've done a macro diet. So it's not anything that is, you know, crazy new. And we find a lot of people can get a little too stressed and make things more complicated so we really want to put the focus back on the food, teach them definitely what macros are, but more 
being aware of the balance of the meals that they're that they're having versus the numbers. So you two are very athletic, and certainly you're very fit and healthy, but you like to say that you're also realistic. So what exactly do you mean when you say realistic? Oh, yeah, we are 100% realistic because we get it. I mean, we're busy, we have families, we're running around all the time. So it really kind of depends on the individual and what works for them. So some people, for them, realistic is having a glass of wine, you know, a couple times a week or, you know, having the breakfast on the go. So it really depends on what works best for people, but that's why we're here for them. We're trying to figure out what is realistic for them. So is it, you know, Sunday meal prep where you do prep all your foods for the week or, you know, do you have a couple preps during the week? So we do work one-on-one with clients a lot to figure out what their realistic is. But yeah, we, we, we make it work for a lot of people. So how would you describe your typical client? Like are most people coming in because they are looking to learn how to make healthy food? Do they want to lose weight? Do they want to gain muscle? Who are you working with and, and kind of how does that break down? Yeah, great question. So our, our clients, they really vary a ton. We have a lot of people who come from trying out various diets that are restrictive. You know, typically the majority of the people come to us, they've already tried everything under the sun and they're like, I just need like some sort of balance. And I think knowing that we kind of have that different outlook on a, a plan, I, I hate to say diet, but that that's kind of where they come to us. They're like, you know, I've done the restriction thing. I've done the no dairy thing, whatever. And they're looking for something that is just more of a balance and that they can maintain long term. But on the other side of things, because we do have registered dietitians who are a lot smarter than us, we get really complicated cases. We have people who have lots of restrictions, you know, dietary restrictions. We have people who come to us who are athletes and they're just looking to improve performance. As well as just, you know, people who know how to eat, like Tina and myself, we joke all the time. We're like, will you write me a meal plan this week? Like, you know what to do. But a lot of people are just coming to us because they need accountability and they just don't want to think about it. And and that's such a big part of the population we work with. So what are the top challenges your clients come in with? I think the big one really is just not knowing what to eat. I feel like people have a lot of idrounding diets and what a diet is. Like it's all salad and chicken breast and egg white omelets and things like that. But really we set them up with a plan that's real food and real food that they're excited to eat. So, you know, we have, you know, egg bakes and tacos and all sorts of pasta dishes and things like that. All these foods that people like don't typically think are on a diet meal plan, but for us, it just comes about down to like realistic eating and food. I think, like Harry said before, accountability is huge. Just having somebody there to you know walk you through things, check in with you, see how things are going, giving you that little push that you need. Because you know sometimes you do know what to do, but like you just need a little help. And then also, as Carrie mentioned too, just having that balance. Because I think a lot of people do think diets are all or nothing, and we have kind of that gray area where, you know, if you want a a peanut butter cup on your plan, you can have a peanut butter cup if you know, you know, that will keep the rest of your week in in check or the rest of your day in check. So that's, that's also another. Yeah. And I, I also definitely think the challenges that so many people have and what is super appealing to us. And I found this to be the biggest void when people were struggling to maintain eating well. And it really is so simple. It's just getting into the habit of meal prepping, right? So because of the fact that our meal service has, it's a week-to-week plan, so we're communicating, how did your week go? How did you feel about your, you know, your breakfast, your lunch? You really like that on the go. So we tweak it as we go so we can really perfect it to something that's long-term because the biggest thing that is missing for most people is just getting into the habit of preparing their meals ahead of time and just knowing how to connect the food to that. So they, they go to the store, they buy all these vegetables and, you know, they're going to start eating good. And then end of the week, they have, you know, a tray full of that salary because they're like, don't know what the heck to do with it. So that's definitely probably a huge challenge is that itself. And we we definitely take care of that. One of the big reasons people come to us. So what are your time saving tips for meal prep? So basically our biggest thing, the way that we plan our, our clients weeks, is we really try to focus on giving them versatile meal so we're going to say, all right, you're going to cook this crock pot chicken and you're going to have it on a salad one day. You're going to have it uh, over a sweet potato this day. So we, we kind of 
ha teach them how to back batch bake, and then we're we're setting them up with three days of meals. So if you're somebody who eats healthy, you don't cook seven different breakfasts, lunch, and dinners for the week. You pretty much alternate between a breakfast you like and a lunch you or you know two breakfasts you like, and you switch that for the week. And that's what we're trying to teach people is how to meal prep smart. So we have them set their our custom plan, we do everything for them, soup to nuts. We give them breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. But meals and macros, what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to get them, okay, you're going to plan three days that are going to be kind of around your schedule, right? So if I, if I work out a day, I'm going to have a little bit more carbs on that day. If it's a rest day, it's going to be a little less. And all you're doing is alternating those couple of days through the week. So you're not reinventing the wheel for seven days straight. You have a meal system that works. For a few days during the week, you switch it up so you're not getting super bored and you're not over prepping. And then the next week, you're getting something brand new. So every week, it's staying fresh, but you're really, we're really trying to dumb it down for people because that is how you meal prep successfully. So that is our biggest tip: is planning, you know, two to three days, sticking to it for the week, and and also that batch baking on um, the weekdays. Any other tips you have? I also was going to throw in there, just finding out what works for you and finding out recipes that you really like and your family likes and that are just go-to for you. And that's what, you know, we, we love working with clients because we love um, that one-on-one -on -one feedback that we get and we get to hear about what they like and they don't like and, you know, what recipes work for them and what didn't work for them. But when it comes to meal planning, I mean, sometimes, you know, just go with the stuff that you know and like. <laughs> right. I think that definitely helps for an easy week like I have a client now she she loves egg bakes in the morning because she just heats them up real quick she eats on the go so sometimes she's eating that in between like an English muffin in the car but she's just like give me an egg bake recipe every week <laughs> just because she knows it works for her and she loves it so as much as you know it's great to have like all this variety and new recipes which you know we give our clients plenty of new recipes and new ideas but if there's something that works for you you know it's okay to keep doing that Right. I'm not sure we answered the question, <laughs> but we can talk about this stuff forever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, there's so there's a huge educational component to what you're doing. It's not just a, you know, here's what you do, but it sounds like it sounds like your clients come in and they do this custom meal plan and they really learn to understand what healthy eating looks like, correct? Is that accurate? Yeah, because even though we're telling them what to eat and giving them the recipes and the grocery shopping list and all that, so much of it is habit-based, and we do do a lot of coaching, and there's a lot of that one-on-one -on -one communication that we are, you know, asking them, you know, did that work for you? Did this not work for you? You know, what are you going to do on your meal plan next week? You know, we're just trying to find that perfect fit for them. Yeah, so so how does this work? Like, people sign up, and you have different levels of programs or different different lengths, right? Correct, yep. Yeah. Oh, so how, what, yeah, what are the different lengths that you have? And then second part to that is do most people like then stick with the program because they're, you know, they're finding like, hey, this helps me make those choices. Or do you see a lot of people who are like, okay, I get it now. I'm off. Yeah, we definitely see both. And I think that's a great question because I think a lot of people think, hey, you know, I should just be able to do this plan and be done and be great. And we've come to find that like, Having a nutrition coach is the same as having, like, a personal trainer. Like, just because you know how to do things doesn't mean it doesn't benefit to have somebody to, like, support you and give you accountability and just be there and hold your hand throughout the process. And that's one of the, obviously, main reasons why we have clients long-term. They know what to do, but it's the continued accountability that keeps them on board. So we have had clients who have been working with us for well over a year and that works for them. Other people, they just need a jump start and they want to, you know, get their, their good in routine. They maybe just fall off track and they just feel like they need a kick in the butt. So some of our shorter plans, we have jump starts, which are a week. And then our custom plans go anywhere between four, eight and 12 weeks. So it really just depends on the client. But we have everything, you know, most of our clients tend to probably average about a 12 week period. So what are your favorite go to recipes that you really love? Oh. Everything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're always changing with the season, too. We try to make our meals go with the season. So we have a lot of summer stuff right now. 
Yeah, right now, um, the overnight oats are super popular with clients. They're always requesting, you know, new recipes, new flavor combinations, all that good stuff. They're just so easy. I mean, you can make up, you know, three batches on Sunday night and you have, you know, breakfast for the next three mornings. So they're just so easy. And I mean, you know, I have some clients that aren't into the, the cold oats, but you can totally, you know, nuke them in the microwave or heat them up on the stove real quick. So that's definitely a popular one right now. People, our clients love protein balls. They're like, we're always getting requests for those. Any sort of crock pot meal, even in, even in the warmer months, people love the crock pot stuff. Yeah, that's we always get requests like people say they don't really love leftovers, so we have to take that into consideration. The stuff that we have, it's not you know anything crazy. Our recipes are that you're getting, but it's stuff that's going to taste good again during the week because, like I said before, you don't want to be you know cooking different things. For the whole week. So something that's going to be good reheated. A lot of our sides, like the cowboy ca- caviar, is a really good one. People love, like, a spaghetti squash, mm-hmm. casserole, any type of casserole, one, like, sheet pan, those kind of uh, are good use. Yep. Yep. So talking to you ladies, you know that we are not going to leave the fitness aspect out of this whole, you know, healthy living thing. So in addition to those awesome recipes, what are some workouts that you guys are totally digging right now? Well, for me, obviously, k is the way to go. <laughs> all I do all day, every day. So what does that involve? So we do high-intensity interval training. It's everything. It's boot camp style, so pretty much weight training. You'll do body weight, TRX, kettlebell, barrel rope, BOSU ball, all that mixed in one big awesome package. Cool. Are there any specific exercises that you're really into? I'm a big fan of anything that's, really going to be like a full body, like I love a thruster or a squat clean, those kind of things, the barbell stuff. I love heavy weight, so that's kind of my thing. I'm not into the running that much. <laughs> I do it, but I would rather swing a kettlebell all day than go out and run. Yep, yep. Thankfully, I have found other running buddies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we, used, up. we used to be running buddies. And speaking of running, um, I'm really into Orange Theory right now. I just think it's such a good workout, and I love the challenge of, like, the intervals and the inclines, and it is not an easy workout. And I think I just love, like, finishing and just being like, oh, my gosh, I'm so exhausted. I'm so sweaty. So, and the variety. I mean, that, I just love workouts that aren't the same thing over and over. So, you know, Orange Theory is a different workout every time you go there. So I'm, I'm really into that lately. Is there anything new out there that you want to try? Well, when we were in New Mexico, the trail running really was a lot of fun. So maybe that's something that I would try in future months. It was just so nice being, like, out in nature and, you know, running around and exploring. So I don't know. That could be something in my future. Yeah. I always tell myself I'm going to do some sort of yoga, but (laughs) (laughs) at my intensity, you know, like, our personality, it doesn't really jive. But I would love to try the aerial yoga. I think there's a place that just opened near us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that looks like a lot of fun. I know it's probably not super new, but I think that would be like a fun girl's night. Yeah, yeah. I need some more yoga in my life. I'm so tight everywhere. <laughs> I really want to try the aerial yoga, too. I, now I'm wishing that I lived near you guys so I could just crash your girl's night and go. I know. Yeah. I always have people with I can have, like, the photo. Like, <laughs> all the cool photos people posted, and it looks like be a lot of so fun. fun. Just promise me you'll also share the, like, total fail photos where you're, like, falling out of your thing because that would make me (laughs) really be happy with life. What are you guys loving lately for fitness? I like my high intensity. Oh, I like my I like my hit workouts. I teach boot camp as well, and I'm like you. I love to swing a kettlebell. I can do that. I can do suitcase swings all day. You ask me to run a lap around the gym, and I'm grousing about it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I need I need yoga too. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing like shorter distance running this year because every year I get roped into doing something long and and always awesome. Like it's always fun. But you know I. I keep on saying yes to all these like half marathons and then I train for them and it doesn't leave much time to do like the shorter speed work, which I really enjoy. So, so yeah, I've been doing more of that. And I actually, I, I got a 5k PR earlier this year already. So I'm hopeful that I'm going to knock another one out before, before the end of the year. And before I probably get roped into doing something super long again, but I also, and I, I too enjoy swinging heavy weights around. So there's that. Yeah. You guys have been awesome, and I think that we've got some really good tips for our listeners for um, for meal planning and prep and, and recipes. But we have one more really important question for you before we go. 
That is, what is the last song you listened to before you joined us for this podcast? Uh, I it was I don't know the name of it, but it was oh I think uh, Nicki Minaj. I've been listening to it on my radio. It's Prod. It's like my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah I listen to on my way here. And I actually the only reason I remember this is because it's my favorite song. And I was like driving into we're at Cape It right now. I was driving into Cape It. I was like oh I love the song. <laughs> like, I don't want to get out yet, but it's something like this by Coldplay. And somebody, and I love the song for running, and I just love the song. Anytime it's on, I like turn it up super loud and sing like a huge dork. But <laughs> but oh, it is a good one. Yeah, it's so good for running. Well, thank you, ladies, so much for being on the show today. It was very informative. We had a lot of fun with you. Thank you. This thank is our you. first, well, mine anyways, my first <laughs> podcast. So I thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we totally appreciate Hopefully it. Hopefully we weren't not too awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Not a I chance. Like we, as we went along, but at the beginning, we were both like looking at yeah. each other. We're like, oh, we're so nervous. I <laughs> hope that your listeners learn a little bit more about us. Love this show? Tell us why in a five-star review on iTunes, and we'll read it on the air. Also, make sure you are a subscriber. If you want to reach out to say hi or have a question about a recent episode, yay, well, feel free to email us at podcast at fitfoundgirls.com. And if this podcast jives perfectly with your brand, consider sponsoring the show. Get more info by emailing advertising at fitbottomgirls.com. Find all kinds of Fit Bottom goodness online and on social media at Fit Bottom Girls, Fit Bottom Mamas, Fit Bottom Meets, and Fit Bottom Zen. And if books and movies are your thing, check out the other podcast I co-host called Book vs. Movie, which you can find anywhere where you search for podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.